song of Moses, got it all under control. Um, remember a song that God instructed you should learn. The 19th verse, if I remember right, from chapter 31, he instructed, put this in the mouths of the children. So it's fantastic information as to who our enemy is and what, how you should be armed and so forth. So we come to the end of the song, and we're going to pick it up in the next verse following that song of Moses that you were instructed in Revelation 15 that the overcomers, those that overcame the mark, would be singing. I don't know. Do you know what that means? If you don't, you need to get to work. If you do, praise God. Chapter 32, the great book of Deuteronomy, Moses will be passed on to the Father very soon after the completion of this song, and he kind of basically recaps from here to the end. Let's get into it. Chapter 32, verse 44, and it reads, with that word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people. He and Hosea the son of Nun. Now, this is an ancient spelling of Joshua, all right? Hosea, Joshua, and um, go then to the Greek, Jesus, all the same word, all right? Uh, what does it mean, uh, Yeshua, Yahweh's Savior, okay? Verse 45. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. How many of them? All of them. 46. And he said unto them, Set your hearts, that's to say your minds, unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children, that's from generation to generation, your children to observe, to do. Now what do you have? You observe, but also you participate. All the words of this law being God's command. You know, if you want to please God, you follow his commandments. After all, you being his child, that's just the way it should be. That is to say, if you want to be in good with him to the point you would receive the blessings, I kind of like the blessings of our Father. I like them a whole lot better than the cursings as we learned in prior chapters here. The blessings are comfortable and the cursings are very upsetting. And it makes it hard on families. It splits families. Nothing but trouble. So it's important. It's very important. Verse 27, 47, rather. For it is not a vain thing. Vain means it's not empty in your life. It's not worthless. It's, it's not a vain thing or empty thing for you because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whether ye go over Jordan to possess it. And I say to you, even in this generation, unto this day, if you do the Father's bidding, he's going to bless you. That's his promise. He always keeps that promise. It's a thing you can be very assured of. Actually, when he sent his son, his only begotten son, he basically certified that the promises, that they were valid, that they were good, and that he fulfilled his promises. It is your life. What do you choose to do with it? That's up to you. As he said in prior chapters, I set before you life and I set before you death. Which are you going to choose? And, and it is absolutely so. And that would be the 15th verse of chapter 30. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Evil, of course, always brings and leads to death. And, of course, good, that's goodness, your goodness or doing right, righteousness, brings you life. So it is your life. And that's why many times you will hear me say that Christianity is not a religion. It's a reality. It is your life. But it is doing the commandments of God as he has so instructed. So I don't know, how are you doing? It, it, from generation to generation, even to this one, verse 48. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, saying, "This now this is not to the group, but to Moses, 49. Get thee up into this mountain, Abram, Abram meaning the regions beyond, unto Mount Nebo, and of course Nebo means prophet, all right, which is in the end of Moab, that is over against Jericho, the descender, and behold the land of Canaan, which I have unto, which I give unto thee, unto the children, unto the children of Israel for a possession. Jurors. Now, when God gives you something, He takes care of the problems and ensures that you have it as well. Fifty, speaking to Moses, and die in the mount whither thou goest up and be gathered unto thy people as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor and was gathered unto his people. Now, there's going to be a little deviation in this trip, and we'll talk about it before we finish the book. Verse 51, why uh, God is about to explain why Moses won't enter the promised land. 51, because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Merabah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. And Zin means flat, out in the flat land there, desert. Because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. And of course, Merabah, and it's probably a good idea for you to memorize the Hebrew meaning, it, it means strife, trouble. Kadesh means holy, so it was strife in the holy place, or strife concerning that that was holy. God was trying to present the rock at Meribath, which would bring forth the water, and Moses struck it twice. He was supposed to speak to it. It would be like crucifying Christ a second time, for Christ was that rock that brought forth the living water, which if you partake of it, you'll never thirst again spiritually. And uh, God just didn't like that. Now, um, you find that documented in Numbers chapter 20, verses about 11 through 13. I'll repeat, Numbers chapter 20, verses 11 through 13. And um, it's, if you want it, Meribah meaning strife, Kadesh, uh, the holy should have been. God didn't like that. Now, you would think, here Moses, that little old babe that was in the little old ark of the, uh, ark of the, that particular day, which was a little basket made by his family, and pushed out into that old crocodile infested Nile, and his little sister walking along the bank, and all, all his life, 140 years of it, of helping the people, and yet God did this to him. I suppose if God wanted you to know something, you're going to find that the Father loves him very much. And I'll get, as a promise from day one, I'll explain God's love for him, toward him, in the final chapter, and we'll save that for then. But it does seem a little um, strong that this one that had given his all, basically, would be um, uh, kept from entering the promised land after all the wondering because of striking it. But you don't, you stick to God's word. You don't break it, especially if you're in leadership. That compounds the fracture. So leaders take note of it, rememorize it, and know if God says to do a thing, you take, if, if you are led to teach his word, then let it be his word, not the word of men or he will punish you. 52. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee. I mean, you could from Mount Nebo, that would be the highest peak among that group. Um, uh, the, uh, with Abraham being a group and Nebo being the highest peak, you could see over the Jordan. See the land beyond thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give the children of Israel. You can't do it, Moses. That's it, period. Chapter 33, verse 1. 
And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And I'll tell you quite frankly, this is kind of, some of this is a kind of a repeat for part of the tribes from a um, reoccurrence of Genesis chapter 49, the blessings to the various tribes. Verse 2, And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand went a fiery law for them now let's let's do a little bit of something with this so we better understand it means god appeared of course on mount sinai where he gave the law but when god appeared there it was so bright that even to mount seir which is a mountain to the east his brightness was brighter than the sun, if you would, as far as lighting up that sky, the Shekinah glory. And, and even um, Paran, there's a little bit of confusion among scholars as to which mount it was. I feel it was to the south, a much taller mountain and greater mountain, and he lit that entire area up when he brought the law, and it frightened the children, of course, as you well know from history. And that's what this is reiterating. And when he came, here we learn that he had ten, a host of angels with him, people, children, in bringing forth this. The fiery law is um, rays of fire. That's what the Shekinah glory appears. Do you know something? It doesn't hurt we that follow him. It only hurts those and frightens those that are not of God. It's rays of truth. Light has always been truth. Verse 3. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone, everyone shall receive of thy words, his saints, his holy ones. Again, there's a little confusion on this. I feel in his hand means they serve him. The host certainly that is with him serves him, loyal. There is children. They know what must be accomplished. And every one of them rejoices every time a person receives salvation when that soul, that entity, that person joins the group. Um, but God in all his glory, he loves his children, all of them, even you. Verse 4. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob, Jacob being all the seed, of course, and the law being the inheritance. Why? It's a gift. I know the law is usually thought of in a very uh, almost negative sense. The law is good. It's people that are bad. The law tells you how to please God. And when you please God, you're going to reap rewards for it. That's why it's called your inheritance, because you inherit. He's got to be your father, and you've got to be his child before you inherit the proceeds. Otherwise, you're a stranger. So you've got to, all children, all people are his children. But let me restrict that just a little more and put another condition. Only the children that love him participate in the inheritance. Verse 5, and he was king in Jeshurun. Now, the he here, though it's lowercase in many King James and the manuscripts, it is, is speaking of our father. And yeah, he was even king of Jeshurun, and Jeshurun is a kind of a, a slang word that God uses for Israel when they're... Um, uh, good time Charlie's. Remember, it was back in the Song of Moses in verse 15. He's even the king of them when they are being naughty, so to speak. When the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. And verse 6, here comes the promises. Let Reuben live. Reuben would have been the firstborn, of course, and not die. 
and let not his men be few. You'll note that the word not is not in the manuscripts and dropping it, it would say let his men be few. You know what happened to um, Reuben? He um, brought to pass an incestuous act and um, so he would not be the firstborn. All right, he would not suffer, the, be granted that privilege. Simeon, of course, will be left out of this, being the second born, and um, meaning heard. And Genesis 49, uh, 7 probably explains the reason why. Because he would, his inheritance would be with Judah. So in a sense, he's not left out. He would be scattered and mixed with the other tribes. Verse 7. And this is the blessing of Judah. And of course, uh, Simeon would in part, the second born would um, be in part uh, this blessing. Judah, of course, means praised. And this would be the scepter line, the king line. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him and be thou in help to him from his enemies. And that's quite a blessing, asked upon them, let his hands be sufficient. What does that mean? That he can take his hands and do his work to sufficiently accomplish that that God would have him accomplish, to be a doer, um, to be praised. And uh, so it is. God basically allowed that. Verse 8, and of Levi. Levi, of course, be, meaning joined, and inasmuch as this was the priest line, all should join to it or they're outside away from God. Got it? And, and of Levi, he said, let thy feminine and thy urim be with thy holy one, whom thou didst prove at Masha, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Mirabai. Now, I ask you to remember Mirabai, Bach, as I should say, it means strive. And of course, um, Masha means temptation. So there, there they were tempted. Now, uh, Levi, of course, being a priest, and the priest having a breastplate, the Urim and the Thummim were part of the breastplate. It is believed by many that it was uh, a small pocket, and within this pocket there were two precious stones, most likely, uh, of diverse colors, one each carrying the name, and whichever stone was brought out of the bag, that gave a yes or no answer. Now. Do I go along with this? Well, not really. Because, and I'll tell you why. You will note here that usually it's Urim and Thummim that are, they are given in that order. But here, the Thummim is, Thummim is first. What does, um, what does, um, um, uh, first off here, let's take, the um, thumen means to be, um, it, it means perfection, all right? Urim means light. And, and not the light that many people might take it, a beautiful, glorious light. Uh-uh. It means bringing stuff to light. Guilt. In other words, if, if Urim come out of the bag, so-called, you were guilty, all right? And if um, the other came out, you were innocent. I think to be able to judge by God's law what is right and who is guilty and who is innocent isn't a matter of stones myself. Though the priest plate with all 12 tribes, the breast plate with all 12 tribes and so forth, makes a nice story, does it not? But I believe God has given the Levitical priesthood, the intelligence and the law to judge by without going to a couple of rocks. Uh, and I realize that it, it was a custom of the people. It was done. And unfortunately, to this day, it's still done by some people, all right? 
um, they seem to ignore the fact that Christ came, God with us, and that we still have the law to determine what is right from wrong. It's, it's a matter of common sense, not casting lots or drawing lots, or be that as it may, okay? Uh, so with, um, with uh, the light and the innocence, then certainly when they were tempted. Now, I think that the, one of the main things that you want to remember is that when Moses struck that rock twice, you want to be real careful about following Christ because it lets us know you're not going to re-crucify him. Look what happened to Moses as an example. It is wrong once you have brought salvation to a group of people to continue teaching salvation to them when they're already saved. Why? Christ, the rock, does the saving. And it's almost an insult to continue teaching salvation to that same group of people once they're saved because it in itself uh, automatically says you don't believe Christ was able to save them because you keep teaching salvation to a group that's saved. After that, though man falls short, he doesn't need to be saved again. He needs to repent. Because to say he needs to be saved again shows failure on Christ's part to bring about salvation rather than on man's part because he's evil and, choose, and, and sin brings him uh, out of um, sync with God's plan. So therefore you need to teach repentance. So teachers need to be very careful. Leadership of Christianity is a very serious thing. And there is only one way that you can keep yourself out of trouble with it, basically, and that's to know God's Word, whereby it is God's Word you're teaching and not a bunch of malarkey spread around by man. All that will do is bring heartache and strife, that being the meaning of Merabah. supposed to be Kadesh, holy, nothing holy about it. So uh, I am, well, we'll leave that subject there, but I, I find it quite interesting myself that, um, that uh, we have the two, and so it is. Nine, who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he acknowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children, for they have observed thy word and kept thy covenant. And so here we have it, verse uh, 10, let's continue on. They shall teach Jacob, this is to say Levi, they shall teach Jacob thy judgments, Jacob being all of the tribes, all right? And Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee and whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. And naturally, Christ fulfilled this law in as much as he became the supreme sacrifice for one and all times as far as blood shedding is concerned. And he is that shed blood, that lamb slain for one and all times. That, and this turns us to that rock that was struck twice of the water that when you partake of it, you never thirst again spiritually. Eleven. Bless, Lord, his substance, and accept the work of his hands. This is, now let's get back on track. This is what the Levitical priesthood is supposed to accomplish. Smite through the loins of them that rise against him, and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. And um, the uh, Lord wants his substance, but what is that substance that he chooses today? Love. And you'd better give it to him. If not, why can you call him father if you don't love him? How could you expect a blessing if you don't love him? And the substance he requires, not blood, not some burnt animal. He wants that love that generates from within each person moving outward. He can't force it or it's fake. He can't order it or it's fake. He can't bribe or buy it or it's fake. He wants you to love him for what he has done for us. 
for what? Better said, he's done for you. So there we have the priesthood and what they're supposed to do. Um, I, it, it is a thing of almost weeping that people fall out of sync with the dispensations of time and events. That of the law that was fulfilled, Colossians chapter 2 documents much of this that I have stated. Hosea chapter 6 verse 6 documents that he wants your love, not some burnt animal. That's how you receive God's blessings. Moses continues on, verse 12. And of Benjamin, Benjamin, of course, means son of my right hand. He said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. What, what, um, what is between your shoulders? Basically, your heart, all right, your, your being. And also your back, uh, it, he protects your, he, this was a good uh, blessing of, uh, ben, to Benjamin and for Benjamin. Paul himself was a Benjamite, documented in Romans chapter 11, verse 1, of that tribe of Benjamin. And um, uh, so uh, certainly he was protected, and you might, when he received stripes on his back, I would hate to be the people that issued them ordered them and delivered them because I'm sure they've already paid well for it. Verse 13, and of Joseph, Joseph of course means increase. It was Joseph that his brothers sold him. And of Joseph he said, blessed of the Lord be his land for the precious things of heaven for the dew and for the deep that coucheth beneath. 14, and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun and for the precious things put forth by the moon. God loved this one, he really did. And he used him mightily as you well know even in Egypt, verse 15. And for the chief things of the ancient mountains and for the precious things of the lasting hills. I suppose this is one of the better prophecies or inheritances that one could wish for, 16. And for the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof, and for the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush. Who dwells in the bush? Which bush was burning and yet did not consume the bush? Let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. Why was he separated from his brethren? They sold him, sold him into bondage. And yet, beloved, don't miss the golden opportunity to understand our father being in control. Had they not sold him, he would not have gone to Egypt ahead of the family. And with God's blessings going into Egypt, he gained control basically of Egypt being second in command to Pharaoh alone, in charge of all monies, and in control of storing grains and so forth. Why God giving him the prophecies he needed. And it would seem that God spoke through this one Joseph and many times it, God speaking to him and through him got him in trouble with his brethren in the first place. I suppose what I'm trying to say here and I think it's well worth noting is that God in the overall plan brought it to pass exactly for the betterment of all the tribes, even if one was sold in captivity by his own brethren, which they lived to regret tremendously. For he had the right to pass the death sentence on every last one of them. And naturally, love filled his heart, and he embraced them rather than destroying them when he was in a position that he had the power and the authority in Egypt 
to have brought that to pass. The love of God. Why, why am I going to this end? Well, in your own life, many times God arranges more than you might think, especially if you be of the election. Sometimes I, I, I can tell you without even questioning you. There have been times in your life, if you be of God's election, where you have wondered, why am I, why am I here? Why, why is this happening as it is? Because God's going to arrange it. He's going to bring you to a place. I, I have seen God's election try to avoid or pull back from the truth. It's impossible. Can't do it. God won't let you pull back from a truth. And his, what is truth? His word is truth. His word teaches us those that are guilty and those that are innocent. Don't need rocks to do that. His word teaches us how to be prosperous and successful. His word changes lives. His word in this book of Deuteronomy brings blessings and it brings cursings. Choice is yours. So what I'm saying is God controls your life perhaps a great deal more than you might think, just as he controlled Joseph's life. And I'm not, I'm not trying to compare you to Joseph. I'm just saying and making the point, God's in control. And I think that's wonderful. You, if you have the faith to trust him, I don't care what you pray for, you should be willing to allow God to make the decision for he knows what the outcome is. Therefore, it is to your benefit to give the advantage of answering prayer to your benefit that should increase your love for him, whether your prayer for whatever it is you're asking for was granted or not. You should love him that much and be willing to serve him to be able to say, yes, Lord, I see, I understand. So let's continue his blessings and we'll cease there then. Verse uh, 17, as we continue. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock and his horns are like the horns of unicorn. There's no such thing as a unicorn. It's a wild ox, okay? With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. And, of course, Ephraim is double fruit, and Manasseh is forgetting. Many people feel that Great Britain and America make up those two particular peoples. Do I believe that? Yes, I do. Mainly because the house of Israel separated now from the house of Judah. What has happened to those two nations along with their uh, tributaries such as Canada and so forth fulfills prophecy, fits prophecy, is prophecy. And our Father's word always comes to pass as it is written. Well, we will pick up here in the next lecture and no doubt we'll, we'll most likely complete the book of Deuteronomy in that next lecture, continuing with the blessings of the children. Again, uh, m many of these are listed in the 49th chapter, but this is the blessings given by Moses to the children just before they go into the promised land. It makes a difference, it really does, as to the duties of those that the prophecies were made to because that must be fulfilled. And God will arrange lives to see that they come to pass exactly. Manasseh being forgetting a lot of men, uh, um, uh, a lot, they don't even know who they are, must that be forgetful. They, they, many of them call themselves Gentiles. You know, they don't even know, we talk about being forgetful. And that's kind of sad, isn't it? When one can't trace history enough in migrations that you know who you are and what purpose you have in life, it's kind of makes one wonder, does it not? Well, study your Father's Word, it can change your life.